Here we go. All right, this is a form of slope, but not everything is a straight line. So when you've got something that looks like this, it's obviously not a straight line. And you want to find how fast X and Y are changing in relation to each other. Like often Y is the profit and X is the number of objects that need to be produced, the number of products and how they relate to each other. It's very important to be able to find the slope, but how do you find slope when it's not a straight line? And the answer is you imagine that you're drawing a point at a particular X that might be a product, the number of products you're producing. You draw a line that touches the X axis, the, the graph at only that X, and then you measure what the Y is and you find the slope, find slope. And doing this will let you find the slope for any X anywhere on your graph. But the problem is, do you really want to have to draw a straight line and then find the slope of all of these lines? Well, no, you don't. You need a formula that will let you do it more quickly. And so this formula is for finding the slope of a line that touches a curve that's not a line at more than one point so that at that point we can actually find a straight line. So there are some things in here you need to know, like suddenly there appears this letter H. What the heck is H? Well, H is a number. It's not a variable. But the thing is, it's usually a very small number like that, or more often like this. And it represents the error in your measurements. In science, it represents the area error in your measurements, because you're always going to have some error in your measurements. So you have to take account of that. But you don't want to have to write it every time. So you just say, OK, well, we'll let H equal one of those. And as the scientist, you know what that is. And um, then you just call it H and you work with H. OK. So there are three steps that we need to follow, and I'm going to do each of these problems as steps. The first one is just a straight line. And I need to make this a little smaller so it's not blurry. And again, I want you to be able to see it, so I think I'll leave it about there. Um, this is a straight line right here. So I know what the answer to slope is right away, it's five. Because this is in slope intercept form, tells me right away, the slope is five. Okay, so um, that's gonna be the answer, but I wanna show you the steps with something that's the easiest form of a function to take the difference quotient of. And that's what this is called right here. It's called the difference quotient and it's designed to find the slope at a point. The slope at a point, if at that point you draw a line and find the slope of the line, and it tells you how fast X and Y or Y and X are interacting, which is important. No matter what you do, you want to know how fast you're going. So, let us get going. Step one.
you know what f of x is, it was just given to you. f of x is 5x plus 8. But you need to find out what f of x plus h is. And this is a really good way to find out how functions work. Okay, anything I put in the parentheses, I'm going to have to put in the x. So I'll have 5x, x was here, plus 5. But now, 8, 8, plus 8. So I'm going to have to put x plus h in here because f of x plus h says put that where the x was. Now I distribute because that's what I always do when I have a number outside parentheses. That will give me 5x plus 5h plus 8. Again, if you came in later, h is a very small number, like these numbers. You don't want to bother to write it every time, so you just call it h, but it is a number. All right, so now we know what step one is. f of x plus h is 5x plus 5h plus 8. Okay, now look at this numerator here. I have to find out what f of x plus h minus f of x is. That's my second step. So step two is to find out what f of x plus h minus f of x is. Well, I know what f of x plus h is. It's 5x plus 5h plus 8. So uh, that, that Ms. high. Mrs. Barbara? Yes? I have a question. Where did that 8 come from? Right here. Um, the yeah, number. Oh, OK, OK, I see. Oh, that's you. the original function. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. A good question. Thank you. So 5x plus 5h plus 8. Now that's f of x plus h. Now I'm going to subtract f of x, which is 5x plus 8. Eight. I keep putting H, they sound alike. And so my body is responding that way. Looking for my eraser. There it is. Okay. Okay. So now that's going, going to be, let me write it out here so I'll have room. 5X plus 5H plus 8, that's f of x plus h, minus 5, x minus 8, because I have to distribute the minus sign. Now I'm going to combine like terms. Notice this is really only polynomial subtraction. 5x minus 5x is 0. 8 minus 8 is 0 and I'm left with 5h. So now I know, oops, this is step two. Step three Let me give this a quick cleaning. Ah. f of x plus h minus f of x. I already know that's 5h. But now I have to find over h because that's the formula. This, that's the formula right here. f of x plus h minus f of x over h. I know what that is, it's 5h. We just found that out. I'm going to divide by h, and the h's disappear, cancel. 
And so I've got a five. Which, because this is a straight line in slope intercept form, I knew that from the beginning. OK, that the slope would be five because it's the number in front of X. Hello? Miss Barbara, is the H's always going to cancel out? In no, this or we... no, okay. no, I wish they were just when you've got a straight line. OK. Miss Barbara. Yes. In step two. Yes. Where we did the minus. Mm -hmm. Fx plus eight. Why didn't we do uh, um five x pl plus five h plus eight? Why didn't we include the eight, the five, five h in that as well? Do you see well, what I'm asking? We did over here. Okay. Um, yeah, f of x plus h. This is f of x plus h. Right there. So in the step before it, why didn't we include the the 5H in with the 5X plus 8? We did, right here. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it would have been totally wrong if we hadn't done that. Okay. So it's good to point that out. I just don't see it. I'm sorry, but I where we where we have the minus in step four we have minus and then in parentheses is five x plus eight. So yes. it's assuming that the five h is there as well. It's right here, five h. Okay. Do you see it? Okay. Because we found out that f of x plus h is, all right, I distributed the 5, which gave me 5x plus 5h plus 8. Okay. So when I say step 2, which is f of x plus h minus f of x, this is f of x plus h. And then let me erase my arrowy things. Okay. This is f of x plus h here minus f of x. Because I have to find out what that is because that's what goes up here. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and this minus sign I was able to get rid of this set of parentheses because I distributed the minus sign. Okay. And you get rid of this set of parentheses because it's like having a one out in front of it. And one times this is this. Okay. For anybody who might be wondering. That's good. You want to understand these steps because these steps are applied to the very simplest possible example of what it is we're doing. Now we're going to apply these steps to a quadratic binomial, x squared minus four. So here's f of x. And I need to find the difference quotient for this. F of x plus, I mean, uh, x squared minus 4 looks like this. So for a particular x, we would be drawing a straight line right here and finding the slope in order to find how fast x and y are changing in relation to each other. Better to have a formula. So here we go. We're going to be working it out. Step one. We have to, we know what f of x is. It's this. But we have to find f of x plus h.
OK. Now, this is very tricky and very dangerous because it's not as easy as it looks. What you have to do is this. Whenever you have a binomial squared, it's going to be multiplied by itself. This is X plus H times X plus H minus four. And just for the sake of making this a little more understandable, I am going to erase this X plus H and change the color. And you'll see why in a minute. And that's because of the method I'm going to use to multiply X plus H times X plus H. You can FOIL if you know how to FOIL. A lot of people don't know how to FOIL. So we're going to use the traditional method for multiplying one polynomial times another polynomial. And here we go. I'm going to take this first X and multiply it by the X plus H in parentheses. Then, I'm going to take the plus H in the first set of parentheses, and I'm going to multiply it by the second set of parentheses. And it's really easy to forget the minus four. Because it's not doing anything right now. It's just going along for the ride. OK, so I'm going to multiply X times H plus X. I mean, X times X plus X times H. But since H is really a number, I'm going to put H first. And then I'm going to take this plus H and multiply it by the X and multiply it by the H and then subtract four. Now let's look at what I get. If I color code this, I'm going to have X times X plus X times H, and I'll turn it around and, oh, 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 oh. Gotta keep to my colors, at least in this part of the video. Okay, plus H times X plus H times H. Okay, so I tried to keep true to the colors here. X times X, X times H, and over here, H times X plus H times X plus H times plus H. And then the minus four, which is just hanging around doing nothing, but I don't dare forget it. Now, getting away from the color coding and just doing black again, X times X is X squared, X times H and H times X are the same thing. But we always put the number first and H is a number. Now, this is HX plus HX, which is going to give me two HX. Because there are two of them. And now this is what f of x plus h equals.
being very, very careful when you do this step. Uh, Miss Barbara, yes. if I have a different method uh, and I multiply them like, you know, like direct, uh, directly like X, X uh, plus like H. Foil. Like FOIL, oh, right? Is that what you meant? Oh, yes. okay. If oh, you yeah. have another method that works for you, that's fine. Go oh, ahead okay. and use it. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, now we know what f of x plus h is. We're going to go to step two, which often is the step that is the most difficult and the one that you need to be the most careful with. f of x plus h minus f of x. Okay, f of x plus h, we just found out, is x squared plus 2hx plus h squared minus 4. And let me kind of put a little note above this. This is f of x plus h. And then minus f of x, which is the original function, so now I've got f of x plus h minus f of x, and now I just have to work out what that is. That's going to be x squared plus 2 h x plus h squared minus 4 minus x squared. Now be careful here, minus times minus is plus. So you're going to have plus 4. And that's where I'm at right now when I'm taking a drink of water. Now, the wonderful thing about this step is we get to usually eliminate like terms, like for instance, x squared and x squared. If I say x squared minus x squared, I get zero. And if I say negative x, I mean negative four plus four, I get zero. So what I'm left with is 2hx plus h squared. So I'm going to write that out. Equals 2hx plus h squared, and again, I want to keep saying it, h is a little bitty number that often represents the error in measurements, so it's very important to not lose it. Ms. Barbara? Yes. Should we um, put the h squared first? Should we flip it because it is a <coughs> exponent, or does that matter? It doesn't matter. Usually, you just okay. leave it in the order you find it. But that's okay. a very good question. Okay. Oh. Now, this is the difference quotient right here. This is what I have to find in order to find the slope of a line that touches the curve at one point at, for any particular x. So I have a formula. I can always find the slope, which is the rate of change, at any point on my curve.
See, it's always the same steps. You always follow the same steps. Now, we just found out that f of x plus h minus f of x is 2hx plus h squared. which h squared is h times h. So I'm going to write it as h, <clears throat> h times h, and you'll see why in a minute. Because I now have to divide by h. Okay, now, those h's cancel and those H's cancel. So my final answer is 2X plus H. That means generally speaking, Y equals 2X will give me how fast the change is happening at any point on that curve, which is X squared minus four but I'm always going to have this little bitty error in measurement that sometimes will be important and sometimes won't be important depending on what I'm trying to do. So this is the answer I would put in the answer box in my math lab. And all that work, that answer is not real bad. Okay. Now here's another one that's also an x squared problem, but now the x squared is changing, it is a minus x squared. And that makes it just a little more difficult. So I decided to go ahead and do this first. And then we're going to the hardest problem today which is this. And so I made sure to even put in an extra piece of paper, just in case. But if I know what's good for me, and I don't always, I better save. Oh, don't crash on me. There. <sighs> okay. So let's do this. Our original function is five minus X squared. Now I'm gonna speed up a little so you can see that, well, and I'll point out where the hard part is. So step one, well, I'll clean it up when I get to it. Um, I'm going to find F of X plus H. Miss Barbara? Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, someone is in the waiting room. Oh, to... thank you. Okay. There we go. All right. Okay. Thank you, thank you, because I cannot see. So if you'd let me know, that's great. You're welcome. Okay, five minus X squared is going to be five minus X plus H squared. Now watch this. That minus sign is going to wreck everything for me if I am not very careful. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lock it out. And just deal with X plus H times X plus H 
and then I'll distribute in the minus sign. So five minus bracket X, I'm going to do what I did before, but not color code it. This is one way to multiply X plus H times X plus H, and there are quicker methods that you may have already learned and you should use them if you feel comfortable with them. And then bracket, okay? X times X is X squared. Plus H, okay, X times plus H. I'm going to write it as HX because again, H is a number and we always put the number in front of the letter. And then plus H times X. Plus H times plus H. Okay. Now I'm going to combine these like terms first. Well, I meant for that to be a paren. So minus bracket x squared plus 2hx plus h squared. And if you wanted to memorize that, whenever you square x plus h, you're going to get x squared plus 2hx plus h squared. Some people memorize it, other people don't. And it's okay either way. Now I'm going to distribute the minus sign and there's such a danger I would have gotten it wrong if I had not locked out that minus sign. So negative times positive is negative. Negative times positive is negative. Negative times positive is negative. And now this is what F of X plus H equals. You have to go very slowly and very carefully. And I'm going to save. Okay. Now step two. We're going to have to calculate F of X plus H minus F of X. And so F of X plus H is this. Five minus X squared minus two H X minus H squared. That's what F of X plus H is. Minus the original F of X, five minus X squared. Okay, that's the problem right there. So that'll give me five minus X squared minus two H X minus H squared. Now, I distribute the negative sign. Negative times positive is negative. And negative times negative is positive. Positive. 
And now that I have this, I combine any like terms I find. Five minus five is zero. So they're gone. And negative x squared plus x squared is zero. So they're gone. And what I'm left with is negative 2hx. Minus h squared. Now notice our two answers are going to be very close together. I mean, very close. The only difference is going to be a negative sign. So step three, that's our final step. In step two, I found out what the top equals. Negative two h x minus h squared. And then on the bottom, I just divide each term by h. Some people do this, and that's okay, but then they have to remember to go back. And I should have written h squared as h times h, just to make it a little easier to cancel the h's. And so our answer this time is negative 2x <gasps> minus h. My dog is barking. Let me see what's wrong. She's an old girl and sometimes poops on the floor. So that's taught me. Y'all talk about this and work through this and see if you understand it and I will be right back. Okay, she went out. I had left the back door open. I have a yard. Um, but now she, because she's very old, here's the whole story. She's very old and crippled up the way many of us get as we get older. And so I have to sometimes, when she's having a bad arthritis problem, walk her around to the front and bring her in the front. But I'm not going to do it now. I'll just do it during break and we'll have a break after this last problem. But the last problem is by far the ugliest and the most complicated. Not because it's hard, but because there are so many parts to it. Okay, so it's gonna be a pain. I'm warning you in advance, but then we get to take a break and I'll walk my dog around the building my house. OK. Here we go. But it's the same. It's always the same. Step one, step two, step three. And you'll be much less likely to make a mistake if you keep your steps separate and go very very slowly. So step one. We know what f of x is, we have to calculate 
f of x plus h. We've got nine times parentheses x plus h squared plus, well, what happened to do not disturb? My phone do just doesn't listen to me, okay? It doesn't listen and neither does my dog, okay. So there, I've put x plus h in for every x. So my next move is to do this. Math is very much like a game and you have to figure out what is my next step. It's a game of strategy. Okay, so here I can just distribute the six. Boom, boom, and I'll come up with plus six X plus six H plus six. Save, because I didn't save the last time. Okay, now I'm gonna have kind of the same problem as last time. Last time I had a negative in front of the X plus H times X plus H. Now I've got a nine. I prefer to go ahead and work out the X plus H times the X plus H first. So again, we're going to have nine times X times x plus h plus h times x plus h plus 6x plus 6h plus 6. If I don't keep writing it, I could forget. Forget it's there and then make a mistake. Okay, now equals nine times. Notice I went back to parentheses. It's not all that important, but when you use brackets like this, they're just parentheses by a different shape. It's more pleasing to the eye. It's easier to see the difference between parentheses and brackets, and it's, it's just bothersome to have to use paren paren. But now anyway, I can go back X squared plus HX plus HX plus H squared plus 6X plus 6H plus 6. Now at this point, I could distribute my nine, but it's really considered better form to go ahead and on the inside of the parentheses to add all, well, to combine all your like terms. So X squared plus two HX plus H squared plus six X plus six H plus six. equals, finally, I'm going to distribute the nine. Nine X squared plus 18 HX, because I have nine times two, and that's 18, plus nine times H squared. Plus six X plus six H plus six.
And I'm going to save while you look at our lovely, lovely answer. For step one, this is what f of a, x plus a, uh, f of x plus h, yes. Okay, now step two. We find out what f of x plus h minus f of x is. So f of x plus h is 9x squared plus 18h x plus 9h squared plus 6x plus 6h plus 6. That's f of x plus h. Minus 9x squared plus 6x plus 6. That is so ugly. OK, f of x. But we must persevere. Can you imagine that? Is that long or is that long? Okay, so next step. 9x squared plus 18hx plus 9h squared plus 6x plus 6h plus 6 minus 9x squared minus, because I'm distributing the minus sign, 6x minus 6. And now that all the parentheses are gone, I can combine like terms. So I'll have a 9x squared minus 9x squared. Boom, boom. I'll have a 6x minus 6x. And a 6 minus 6. So what I'm left with is 8. 18hx plus 9h squared plus 6h. And you've got to check carefully, are there any h terms hiding in here? And the answer appears to be no. Usually you'll just be left with h terms, but that's a usual. OK, that's a usual. So now we know what f of x plus h minus f of x is. We can go ahead and finish up this problem and I can rescue my dog and maybe you can rescue your bladders or get a drink of water or something. And then we'll be back to do something that is not as abstract as this. Okay, so there you go. We know what the top is. Step two was all about finding what the numerator of this fraction is. Now I go through and I divide each separate term by H. And 
and I rewrite h squared as h times h, just cause makes it easier. The h's cancel, h's cancel, h's cancel. And so my final answer is going to be 18 x plus 9 h plus 6.